Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Joe. Typically, I do a show every week, sometimes twice a week, most of the time twice a week, about all the stuff that comes out on Kickstarter in the board game and RPG space. My other adventures happen to be whenever I find something that seems to be interesting. I've done videos on doing custom enclosures for Kingdom Death, and this time my subscribers have asked for a uh, description of what I was doing with binding my RPG books that I buy in PDF form or I get from Unearthed Arcana Reddit pages or the Game Binder or um, the Home Brewery, one of the other uh, RPG sites that's out there that lets you legally obtain a PDF copy of the material that you might want to use in your homebrew and your home game and that type of stuff. So I said, okay, I'll get to it. This is that video. This is where I'm going to start showing you all the things that I wanted to do. I'm not going to do the, this is a step-by-step -step version of what you should do in your process. I'm going to show you my entire process with all of my failures. And at any point, you don't have to see them as failures. You can say, that's exactly what I need. That's perfect for my purposes. And go ahead and use it. I don't care. You want to do something better? Great. Come up with something better. But I'm going to show you all the different uh, steps I made to getting to the point. All of the failures are still here, and I'm still going to use them. So it's not really a failure. They're just not the end result that I want to have for these pieces. What are the problems with paper? Paper doesn't update. So if you see the Monster Manual expanded down here, it's already updated. It's got all brand new artwork. Everything's being changed for the 1D and D new editions, all that kind of stuff. So you have to have that as something that's going to keep staying in your mind. These things get typos fixed because they're always online, because they live as PDFs. Um, they get things changed around. They get new editions. Live with it. The point is to make this as inexpensive as possible, but usable. You may not want to print all of the pages. You can print only the pages that you want. Uh, I wanted something that could sit on the shelf. See, these are bound books. They can sit on the shelf with these and be useful in my RPG life. And um, you can see I've made my own labels on them. I did not do the professional labeling. I just needed something that was going to be good enough for the lifetime of these books before they got moved into a new edition and something else had happened with them. They needed to be fairly cheap, but not poor quality and usable. So uh, as I hold one of these, Depending on what feels good in your hands, you may want something that's, you can hear it tapping, hard bound like that. Some of those are this way. You might just need something that you can rifle through uh, very quickly that's soft, and uh, you might change the, the paper weight and different things as you need them. So that being the case, let's take a look at some of the progress and the goals that I had to attain that progress. And first up, one of the first pieces that I created, hardbound. This is one of the things that I bought. As you can see, the tape's already coming up um, that I bought from the DMs Guild, as you can see. And I'm a big fan of Ravenloft. I put tape, regular packing tape on the outside. I took some pieces of cardboard that I had found as chipboard and uh, used that as covers. I used a regular printer to uh, print the paper that goes along here and you know as you can see just regular backing. I don't like the feeling of raw cardboard so I put tape on the sides here to try to make it work. This was regular packing tape and as you can see it's already starting to peel after a few months. It might even start to yellow after a few more months and it doesn't really hold the color. Um, one of the things that I had to do to get it flat was I uh, on this one, you might be able to see actually the ripples that go underneath it. This has been glued, and then I took a big stack of books, pressed it down on top of it, and uh, tried to get the paper as the glue dried to be as ripple-free as possible with heavy weights. When you're gonna buy something that's been wrapped, like one of these guys, they have adhesives and uh, big pieces of uh, machinery that can put the pressure on the cardboard, but you still get the feeling of the cardboard, which is kind of neat. And you can flip through the pages. So that fulfilled my 
needs for this particular book. So that part was pretty cool. What may also be pretty cool for you is something easy like this one was just a few pages and the only thing that happens on the inside of it is a staple. Just like a magazine, you get three staples along the sides and it works great. I can flip through it, all that kind of fun stuff. It fulfills its purpose. Uh, as you can see though, from the colors, let me find a good picture for you. If you were to take a look at the colors on this and the colors on this, this is done with a different type of printer than this here. If you look at, let me find you a picture. Uh, there's a nice one right here. This, with all the colors of this character here, looks a lot better than this one here. This was even when it was running out of ink. It's so much better. How do you get it to be better? This is from an entirely different printer. We'll talk about that next. Things have changed. This is my standard, regular, everyday printer. This is a Pixma, I think it's a 8220. It's probably changed, it's years old. I kept it around forever. And as long as it keeps running, I will keep sticking paper in it, ink in it, and all that kind of cool stuff. That is the one that I printed this guy with, okay? Just the standard one, you probably already have a regular multifunction. It can do photo capabilities, which is nice, but it's not something that's heavy duty. It's sitting on top of something though. So let's move this guy that is very easy to move off to the side. And let's talk about this guy. This is a Pixma Pro 100 Canon heavy duty big printer that is made to print off big sheets of paper and do it with archival level quality. And you can see it's dusty because I use it. It sits upstairs in my regular office and I use it all the time. And the reason why I can use it all the time is lots of people have these, which means there's an aftermarket for ink, which means it makes it affordable. That is the printer that I've done basically all the internals here. And it will allow you to do booklets because the pages are twice the size in their capabilities of a normal sheet of paper. Whether you're doing A4 or eight and a half by 11, you're European or you're American, it doesn't matter. You can buy a double sized sheet of paper. In American, it's referred to as tabloid. It's 11 by 17 and you can get it from Kinko's, Staples, all that kind of stuff. Or you can get it in a big, package from Amazon, just like you would anything else. And you get 500 sheets in a ream, just like anything else. It costs a little bit more because obviously it's double the paper that you would get. And um, it fits in here. It does not fit in the first one that we talked about. If you wanted to just have some regular stapler, snap, snap, snap on a regular eight and a half sheet of uh, paper and double print it, that part's up to you. For me, I needed to be able to bind the way that a regular book would bind. Move this down here. I needed to be able to bind the way that a normal book would bind. And that basically made it a bunch of little magazines. And those bunch of little magazines go together after they've been printed out and get bound. And that makes a nice, sturdy, flippable book, especially in larger sizes. So, I needed this guy. You might say, okay, well, how much is it? You'd be right to ask that question. When I bought this, it was $350. <gasps> oh no, I gotcha. They have a coupon. It's been up there for years. Last time I checked, it was still up there. That brings the price of this down to $150. Might be some shipping things. The world has gone crazy since then, but it's still available and you can still get the discount. You have to wait six weeks, deposit the check, blah, 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 blah but it's there and it can print things for you. Why would you only do this for RPG stuff? Why would you spend so much money? Don't just do it for RPG stuff. This prints uh, 13 by 19. You can do posters, portraits, sell them to your friends, whatever of their favorite pictures, that part's up to you. There are lots of reasons why you can use something that has an archival level of ink. 
but you don't have to buy archival level ink for something that's a project like this. And stuff like this, here we go. It's going to redshift. If all the red's gonna be left and all the blue's gonna go away because it's cheap ink. You can buy cheap ink for this type of project, not a problem. You don't have to buy $60 per toner cartridge. Sorry if that slammed, you can hear it. Um, when this thing is accessible, you can't really move it. It has eight different uh, print pieces or ink wells, and it weighs a ton. It's at least 50 pounds. So you're going to put it somewhere away from everything else. It takes up a ton of space. As you saw, it's twice the size of a regular printer. It has to be to print everything out, but it will just chug and chug and chug and chug, and it will print all of your books that you ever want all the time. I cannot recommend another printer because I haven't used another printer for this purpose, and another printer will not have the discount. You might be able to get the paper and use the printer at your work in order to um, get these things printed out, that's fine. Well, next steps. The reason why we have to use the big printer, right? These pages. Something to notice. These pages, while you may browse through them and it's one or two pages, you know, page one, page two, page three, followed one after the other. If it's a big sheet of paper, like this is, this may be sheet, this is the first sheet, this is the last sheet. So how do you print them so that they're this way? That'll be the next step of what we go over and how you prepare the PDFs for printing. You do not want to print more than five or six sheets uh, at a time on the far end because as you ruffle through them, you know, you catch your fingers going here and ruffling through it, the depth is going to change as you move back and forth and it's not going to move as easily. You can cut the edges of this using something like a paper trimmer, which I have somewhere around here. Um, and you can make them all as even as you want to try to be, and that's fine too. But that might be too much work and unnecessary for you. If you just keep it to five or six pages, you also minimize the problems you might have if something misprints or it skips a page and you have to go back and redo things. This printer doesn't do that very often, but it can happen. Um, I always recommend if you're going to do that, to use five or six pages tops. I think I do five just to keep everything um, in 20 page increments because you have a front and a back, that's four pages, 20 pages, and then I go to the next batch. And that's how I get all of these guys printed out. So let's talk about what you need to do in your PDF settings in order to make that happen. All right, now we're at my computer. Mike's gonna sound different because everything's different. It's at my computer. And I've loaded up this PDF of this witch class that came from, as you can see, the homebrew area, as it's marked there in the left. That means that I can open it up, I can print it, I can do whatever I want with it. I just can't sell it because it's somebody else's material. Keep that in mind whenever you're going to do this, depending on the rules and laws of your country, you can only do certain things here in the US. There's such a thing as fair use. So I can print this for my personal use. And uh, this one happens to have some cool things in it, some neat stuff going on. It's all SRD compliant, all that kind of fun thing. Uh, so I can use it how I want um, and it is legal. I am not in any way ever going to advocate doing something illegal. And that is a very important distinction to make when you're doing this kind of thing. Do not think you're gonna be using my videos to make a uh, whole printing operation that is going to be clandestine and you're going to have a whole D, &D replication empire it's just not going to work don't do it that way so anyway um first thing we got to get to the printing so select this is in foxit pdf so if you have uh, acrobat or some other program it's going to be very similar just hit print okay and then you're going to be given the print dialog box uh first up is make sure you're on the right printer. So my default goes to my regular printer because that's how I like things. So I need to select the Canon Pro 100 that I'm recommending uh, to everybody. And you'll see that these pages in scale, all that kind of stuff, um, it is for me set to 11 by 17. Go ahead and set yours to 11 by 17. 
and then we need to uh, tell it not to print the whole thing on one page, but instead we want a booklet. So this booklet is very important, and you can scroll along and see how it's going to go. One page, then the other page, then the other page, and it's two per page, right? And um, you have to tell it certain things. So you want it to bind on the left so that the edge is here in the middle. Um, if you are in Japan, maybe it goes a different way and you would set it to the right, but that would be the only time I think that you would uh, set it anything but left. Most of the Western world is going to have it on the left and that will be the default. Um, so you'll be okay there. Subset, if you want either odd pages or even pages, you can do that, but all pages is fine. If you're going to have a really large book and it's going to be more than um, the pages you need, uh, I would say, let's say you have a 200 page book. Okay, I would only recommend doing pages 1 through 20 at first. Okay, and then on the next set, you would do 21 through 40. Okay, and just keep going about that in your page range up and up and up. And what that does is it makes it so that you have a bundle that is manageable when you staple it. And you want to pull these bundles off. Don't let it just sit there and stack up. You want to pull these off as it prints. Um, so the first five pages goes, which is pages 1 through 20. Um, they're going to dry. You pull that off and then get it ready for stapling. And um, the reason why you want small bundles is so that it's not too thick to staple and that it doesn't end up uh, at, being too thick to crease uh, as well and it'll be funny in your hands. Okay, so other than that, if uh, you go through the range, you have your first 20 pages ready to go, then you just hit OK and it will uh, start printing. So I'm not going to print this out this time, so I'm just going to hit cancel. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the comments, and otherwise we'll just continue. All right, next we got to talk about the type of quality you want to end up with. So as we saw before, I originally took some cardboard, some regular old cardboard, the type that you might find access as part of packaging. Uh, you can buy it itself called chipboard, and you can get it that way. Um, this is printed off the Pro 100. This is printed off the cheap one. Uh, this is another one of my early attempts to make this thing work. Um, and I didn't like the ripples that were underneath it. It was causing some issues. I didn't really like overall the feel of how stiff the cardboard was. So if you're a fan of the way that the books work and you want yourself something that feels just like one of the uh, the printed copies that Wizards of the Coast makes, then that's what you need to do. You get yourself a piece of chipboard, you print yourself off the best way possible that you're going to be able to live with. This would have been much better, but I didn't understand how much ink I was going to be able to use at the time. So I had an 8.5 by 11 printer working on one side, and I had the 1117 printer working on the other side, and then I was just making it as a process, go, go, go. Had a thought about it now. Uh, I probably would have printed all the covers off of the good printer and then tried the process, but you know, that part's up to you. So what do we do? Well, take your beautiful printed uh, eight and a half by 11 sheet. However, you decide to print that thing off and get yourself some type of a piece of wood or a lot, I mean a lot of weight, a lot of books. And uh, you would take the board, cover it in glue, all over, you know, just hose the whole thing down in glue. It should be the size of your, your sheet here, at least maybe a little bit bigger. Set the glue, uh, set the pages down with the glue, do what you can to take something, like a straight edge of some kind, nothing with any sharp edges, a straight edge is the preferable way to go, and then you smooth, out to the edges okay so what that is going to let you do and you must work quickly is hopefully before the paper starts to accept the moisture from the glue you're able to get it down really fast and then get something flat 
stick it on as best you can. Okay, put as much weight as you can. If you can clamp it to a table, like this here would be, you know, something you could just crank down and clamp it to. Take every book you own, throw it on there on top of it, so it sits there and put it. Get some heavy weights. I would take the uh, 75 pound uh, dumbbells and things that I have, and I'd stick them on top of it as smoothed out as possible. Put another piece of wood so that the the pressure is out there. I'm talking tons and tons and tons of pressure, okay, to keep that thing as smooth as possible while it dries. Come back in about an hour. It's going to look terrible, but it is going to smooth out a little tiny bit as you progress, okay? Um, this one here does not have the glossy cover. It just has the pressure from pushing really hard down on the, uh, the, the surface. Uh, again, printed off on the cheaper printer, so the color doesn't quite look as good as it does here. And that's why, is because this is done with the better printer and that's the cheaper one. So again, make your decisions. I took tape. I took regular shipping tape, regular shipping tape, and I just rolled it around here in order to get this, uh, this thing to be somewhat laminated. Well, what about all this black stuff that you see? Well, that is gaff tape, book binding tape. It looks like black duct tape, but it is not. It is about five to 10 times more expensive. You get very little in a roll and um, it has a canvas backing to it and it lasts forever and it doesn't fray the same way that duct tape would. Duct tape after a few years, you see the silver backing start to come off or whatever backing it's got and the little threads start coming apart and it's got a little gunkiness everywhere. Gaff tape or book binding tape, whatever you buy it as, will not do that. And you can get it in an assortment of colors so that you can make it work. I have my stuff color coded. So the reds are things that have uh, like monster stuff in them and options. The blacks have uh, Ravenloft, blue has spells, white has things like uh, uh, Wild Dawn, the Witchlight, uh, and other things from D&D themselves. If you want to think that far ahead, you can and color code your stuff and that might make things easier for you to find. So that part's one thing you could do. So you can see there's a difference. I gaff taped it. These things cost a fortune. I gaff taped it on the inside, all around the edges, so that when I touch the edges, it feels good, or all around the edges. And in the back, same thing. I told you guys before, I don't like the feeling of the cardboard. So I needed to put something that would laminate uh, so that it would feel kind of normal for me. So then as I sit there and I flip through uh, and I read these books or make my notes or whatever I'm going to use it for, that um, it would still feel good in my hand. Uh, so that was a big problem for me. This one, as I feel it, you know, I know that the sweat from my hands and other things like that uh, are going to make this deteriorate and it'll get bad. And if something spills on it, uh, I worry about that. The back I did with just tons of gaff tape and it costs a fortune. So that is the stupidest thing I could have done. But it makes it look black right here, right? You know what would make it cheaper if, it, if I wanted it to look black? Just buy a black sheet of paper. I didn't need to sit there with the cardboard and do all that. This is thicker cardstock stuff that you can use and you can just buy it in any color. So this was one of my failures of spending too much damn money but I can read through the book and everything's fine there. So uh, make the choice on what you want to do. This one is another one where I sat there with the, sh the shipping tape and tried to, I didn't do the outside edges, I just did it with shipping tape. And I didn't like the, the feel necessarily of it because I could still feel the cardboard, but it cost a lot less. This one is a terrible example I don't know if you can tell, but yeah, you probably can right there, depending on how the wood is or the, the light is. The bubbles on this thing are ridiculous. Like on the back here, oh man, that looks just, just like garbage. Total, awful, terrible. I tried to do this and I love this book. This book is fantastic. This book is one of the first things I wanted to have out. This is why it's done so terribly and I'll probably redo it. 
is because I like the content of what's in this particular book. If you get a little, if you get a chance um, to support somebody, I, I really like the ideas here for Ravenloft. Um, and again, I tried to glue on the back, didn't work out. So let's start getting to the things that kind of started to work out. Um, this doesn't, it still has some bubbles and things in it, but you don't see, maybe you can tell, this is not done with a uh, roll of tape. This is not done so that you can see the lines as it goes down uh, on the sheet. No, this is done with a laminator. I thought I was gonna have like a brilliant idea and use a cheap $30 uh, 3M or Scotch, more like the same company, laminator and just laminate an eight and a half by 11 sheet and make it work that way. Well, when you use a thicker piece of cardboard, like this cardstock here, it doesn't bond. So while it may look nice here, on the edges of it, you need to have an extra half inch or so, maybe a full centimeter uh, of binding because you'll get these bubbles. I don't know if you can tell. I try to make the 4K stuff. You get these bubbles that uh, feel terrible. You can, you can hear it as they lift up. It doesn't bond. The, it, when it heat seals, it heat seals on its edges and it doesn't bind to the thicker pieces of uh, cardboard. Even though there's pits and things inside of this that it, as it shrinks down, it could theoretically uh, grab onto. It doesn't do that. It uh, just kind of sits on top. And I had to bind it again all around with a ton of red gaff tape. And I was like, man. That's terrible. So what does it come down to? Well, this, as you can see, is floppy. But you know what else it is? It's sealed. It feels just like it would if we're one of these guys. When I hold it in my hand, it's great. It still feels rigid. So how does this still feel rigid? How does this have a nice smooth cover? How does this have all of the uh, color and texture of however quality I wanted to print it with and still hold everything correctly? Well, I took out this and I put in regular cardstock. So like this one here has the black cardstock in the back. Some of these have white 110 pound cardstock inside. All of them are laminated and because they are much thinner when they are laminated it actually seals so this is sealed completely you can see it doesn't have to have the outer tape on the outside uh, yeah this one does just for the it was an early uh, prototype I wasn't sure if it would hold but this absolutely does hold you can see Everything sticks, it's bonded on there because it's a smaller piece and it just works better. And these lamination sheets are like 30 cents a piece. The uh, uh, extra heavy piece of cardstock, 50 cents at the highest, probably 50 cents a piece, probably closer to 15. And uh, it just works much better. If you get white, like this guy here, then you can print. This is uh, on regular paper that has been bonded to the, uh, the black cardstock with just the lamination. Um, but you can print pretty good onto uh, this type of paper and still get a pretty good result off of the color. You don't want to use regular cheap paper. One of the reasons that some of this stuff looks so bad is this is premium paper, this is not. Premium paper. You can tell the color is different from there. It doesn't quite work as well. It's just a little bit different. It doesn't hold as much nuance. And uh, the higher end thickness of papers will affect your result. So this has been all of my failures. This is my failure stack. I'm gonna show you closer to how I would do this in my opinion of what is my success. Okay, so let's get these out of the way.
I have printed, as you saw before, my sheets. Okay, so I'll look and see where page one is. I know where I'm going to go. I've got a nice, healthy stack of sheets. You know what? Let me tell you one thing before that. Let's take a, let's say it's your stack, right? Let's say, say you printed out your stack of sheets. They're all correct. Everything's nice. What you need to do, next step, is bind it. Okay? Take a stick. This is a special book binding piece of plastic. You can buy it. It's, it's uh, real smooth in the way that it, it moves. But you could use basically anything that's um, completely flat. Make sure you get a good crease on your spine. Okay? You want a good, good, good crease on the spine. So you do go over it a couple times, really push, get it nice and flat. Get, you know, because even after I've done these, see how they, they kind of separate a little bit? You really got to eh, get down there and really get in there and really, like, you know, put all your weight, like, eh, get it all down there, okay? Everything you got, put it into it. And uh, then you have your sheets. Okay, they all fit kind of together. If you were to try to take a regular stapler and staple the inside, it's not going to work well. You're going to kind of be all over the place. Things are going to move around. It's going to suck. This is a special book binding stapler. So as you move yourself in here, okay, you can get enough clearance that you can find the middle and hit it with a staple. Okay, you do that on three sides, uh, two sides, however many sides you want, you think is gonna work for you. I think three is uh, the best way to go as is like comic books and magazines and that kind of thing. If you buy one of these, use it. Otherwise you might find in your library, school, that kind of place, anyone that does um, pamphlets, mailers, that kind of thing, they may have one of these. And you may only need to use it 20 times. You can do that in a few minutes, get out of their hair, great. But otherwise, you might have to buy one of these funky book binding staplers. You don't want to do that, but you still want to bundle a bunch of them together. You want the simplest, stupidest way to bind it. You just need it done. Big old high capacity stapler. If you take a high capacity stapler, and you shove all your stuff in there, just make sure you know you have big enough staples to go through it. What's gonna happen is if you use this method from the side, it will go through all of them. It will hold it together. This is your minimum. It will hold it together. But when you try to open it up again, it will be bound by the staples. See where my fingers are? That's like where the staples would be, and you can't open it all the way. So that makes things a little bit difficult. Um, so good to have staples on each individual piece. Uh, it's up to you whether or not you want staples to be your binding setup. Um, so make that decision for yourself. I'm getting rid of these for now because I'm not going to use them. So let's set them to the side. Okay. I want this to be like a book, right? I want this to feel as much like a book as possible. So I need to bind it like a book. That includes some special equipment known as a headband and mold. Okay, if you have pages that you want to trim, you can do that in a, this uh, contraption, which is a paper trimmer, and you can set the edges. If you want it all to be consistent, you're really good about being consistent, you can shove this in there to a certain depth and then get all the pages lined up and cut them that way, and it'll be perfect uh, as you flip back and forth and all that kind of stuff. You can do that if you want. That's what I was referring to as paper trimmer. When I cut these uh, pieces of cardboard, when I cut the lamination off, when I cut anything, when I cut every little piece, I did it all with a paper trimmer. So keep that in mind. Mold. I cut this with a paper trimmer too. This stuff is a fiber. As you can see, like even for small stuff, I would use it. And what this does is the glue gets between these little uh, fibers here and holds the glue is going to go on the back here 
it holds everything in place. So you would cut it so that it fits, make it a little bit easier for you guys to see. Um, and you would fit it here so that this holds your, your glue and everything else into place before you zap it with uh, some acid-free PVC, or sorry, PVA glue. Um, the, the book binding people will get some that doesn't yellow and it's a little more expensive, but it's not that bad. The um, Elmer's glue that you might buy is uh, probably gonna yellow, but it would basically still do the same effect. If you need to save that much money, then you can. Um, then if you look at most books that are of high quality, they'll have uh, this type of material. You can see this checkerboard pattern on, it's called a headband. You can get it in different colors and it goes up here. Uh, after you put the mold down, then you would lay this across the top and it just kind of gives something so it doesn't peel away, it doesn't fray at the top and gives a binding there. Okay, how are you gonna get there? Well, take your piece, okay? Get it as square as you can. Then you're gonna take a piece of wood out to the edge as best you can. Get another piece of wood, wherever you can get one from. So this one's a little dusty, but it doesn't matter. Okay, get something else that's perfectly flat. You want this to be as flat as possible. Use all your weight when you do it, okay? Try to get it as flat, as flush. Do it a couple times if you have to. Just try to get it as flush as you can and then set your other guy down in here okay get to the edge of whatever you're working from your, your work surface and then take your clamps two or three clamps are going to be necessary okay start on one side don't clamp it all the way down just start it on the one side and then like that one ended up getting my table down a little bit, fix it, make whatever adjustments you need to make. Clamp the hell out of it. Some people will use drawers if they don't have a piece of wood or two pieces of wood available. And uh, at least one side is really flat. Take your glue, open it up. And as you can guess, Make sure it's all clear of any gunk, because that's what happens with glue. Start getting it wet. Sit there and give it a real good... Now you might get some on the wood, but it is just PVA glue. It's not really super glue or anything like that. It's not gonna hold any better. But the volume that comes off of this, you wanna get thick uh, bits. The volume from PVA versus something like a super glue actually helps hold it in place. And you would just get as much as you can in here. It takes a few minutes. Uh, and in between drying times, you see how warm it is because I'm sweating on stuff. Uh, it is the warmest week of the year right now. And I'm trying to do this. Okay, so you can see it's in there. I got it all the way to the edge because it needs to go all the way to the edge because you intend for it to hold all the way to the edge, right? Okay, so this has to set. If you can see where it's kind of getting dry a little bit, it's not gonna, gonna fully go where it's supposed to, fill it back in, okay? So do that, wow, okay. And then set this somewhere that it's not gonna be a hassle and it has to dry. It's gonna sit there and it's gonna dry and you're gonna do it again. And you might do it again. Um, second or third time through, you will cut the mold, okay? So you'll measure it out, you'll use the trimmer, however you wanna trim it, and you'll set it in there. Along the top, you will do the same thing and set the headband against there and you'll glue the crap out of it. One of the things I like to do after the um, mulm and the headband are started 
is I'll put a layer of glue on top of it and then I'll cut off a piece of excess uh, chipboard because uh, I still have excess tons of it but something else rigid to go along the back um, helps support it from getting wobbly and doing different things so I'll cut it and I'll lay it in there and uh, same thing, I'll, instead of sitting it like this where the glue is up, I'll flip it up and set these on the outside and then let the, I'll show you. I let it dry in this orientation so that the weight of the book and everything else holds it in place and kind of pushes it down. And then what I'm left with is a book that is held together, has this piece on the outside or on the, on the spine, holding the spine together, and I need a cover. So what I'll do now, these days, and you can do this with photo paper if you want, with the, uh, um, cardstock. You can take the regular cardstock, print it out as you would, just put it under photo mat, and it'll come out really well. Or you can take regular photo paper and get glossy if you want to do it that way. And you can set an inside cover to be whatever color you want like this. Put the two of them together, matched up real nice. And then set them in a... This one's not actually open. Let me open it for the purposes of explanation. This is a pouch. And when you open it up... brand new, fresh, new pouch smell. Uh, when you open it up, got another layer here to get through. This is what it looks like, okay? You need something thin. Regular paper works best. If you're gonna use the cardstock, use if you're going to use colored cardstock, like one of these black sheets here that's done on 110 pound, you set it in there and then print your regular paper, photo paper, whatever you want to do, set it in there, get it nice and square as much as you can, lay it against it and run it through your laminator, okay? and then you will end up having to trim these edges off, but it will be bonded. Now, if you use two sheets of paper, you have to leave more of an edge to remain bonded because it's only gonna to bond to one side or the other. But if you just use one sheet of paper and don't put one of these extra colored pieces of cardboard in there, it will bond exactly to this 110 pound paper and you can trim it all the way to the edge, which will result in a nice clean, um, no tape needed edge and that what that lets you do is now you don't have to waste around the edges this expensive binding tape you can just use it here and here now when you're going to do the edge here um, when it finally is ready to glue what i'll do is i'll lay the the glue or the tape strip this outside one it won't be written have anything written on it i'll lay that down put this guy on there and seal it as best I can to the front and back covers on the outside. Then come into the inside covers and lay a line of tape on the inside covers. And what that'll do is it'll keep it from disintegrating. It'll keep it from falling apart. You can, you know, flip, spell, spell, you know, not have any problems, lay it out flat, not have any problems. This window, I just cut a hole in it and then laid it through the laminator. So it's still laminated in that, that orientation. Um, so with that information for you, uh, if you want next, the way that I got the, um, labels, they're, uh, they're pretty well bonded and they're in different colors. I bought these gel pens. These are Crayola signature. You can get them at Target. They come in all the pretty colors you want and it will let you continue to color code the books you've bought. So I use white. Uh, or silver, depending on which one's going to appear better. On the white covered ones, I use a different color. Um, but 
the white works really well and it has like a silver deal. You could probably use Sharpie. Uh, I just didn't have one of those silver Sharpies. I don't like the smell of those types of Sharpies, so I don't want it near my face while I'm having all these books. And so instead I use these Crayola ones that do not have a smell and it works out for me fine. So uh, that being the case, I print, 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 bind, 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 glue, 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 and over and over and over and over again until I get the books that I want. And like I said, just either using one sheet of this cardstock, printing on the one sheet of cardstock, running it through the laminator, and getting the colors that I like. So this one here. So you can see the colors actually match because this one has been printed off on the same printer as this one. So this homebrew book that I liked that has a bunch of stuff about the stars would be great with Spelljammer now. It's ready to go. This one here, same thing. Print it off. You can see it's pretty close because uh, it's printed off with the same printer. The quality of the paper is slightly different so it comes up differently. Uh, there are lots of great homebrew people out there. This guy uh, is another one, Genuine Fantasy Press. Uh, I didn't have a cover sheet for it. Uh, it was just changing things up. But um, I hope you will find the, uh, the best print settings available to you. I hope you will find that this is a fun and worthwhile project. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can throw it in the comments. I'll try to answer it. And at the very least, I hope that the subscribers that were interested in this content have been uh, satisfied. So if you'd like to subscribe to me, there's buttons on the bottom. I will continue to do everything I can to uh, present RPGs and uh, board games uh, in my little space every week, best way possible. You guys have a good one.